Right, well, it seems like, well, it has actually been a few months now since we've been out here having a look at this front lawn project. And the reason why nothing really has been happening at this stage is because up until now, we've been hampered by weather. So it had a lot of wet weather, which made getting heavy machines in here really, really, uh, really, really tricky. Then now what's happened is up until recently, we've been very fortunate here that COVID hasn't affected this area as such, but in the last round of lockdowns where they locked down the whole state, uh, that then included us. So I've had a bit of a struggle getting things happening now. So I'm waiting to get some concrete edging done. Uh, and unfortunately, until those restrictions lift, that can't happen, which is also hindering the last uh, 40 ton of sand to be brought in here. But what I thought I could do today uh, is start to adjust these sprinklers. So all the sprinklers are in the ground now. Uh, and I thought I'd just set all the, nozzle, all the nozzles up and uh, adjust, show you guys how I adjust them, choosing the right nozzles, uh, and we'll go from there. So I've got a little pile of dirt or sand that I've got to shovel into the uh, one of the little street strip there. So we'll, we'll kick on with it, uh, and then we'll move on to the sprinklers. So we'll start with the sprinklers I've got here along the street strip of lawn. Uh, these are the Hunter, just a pro spray body with uh, the narrow strip nozzle. So when you get these, when you get these uh, sprinklers, you'll notice they come with like a, I guess a cap. Uh, don't be don't be too keen to pull these off too quickly because these also act as a flush port. So when these are all installed, as they are here now. Uh, the first time we put this on, there's likely to be some stuff in the line that shouldn't be there. So we leave these caps on here. We give it a bit of a flush, let all the stuff come out before we put the nozzles in because we don't want to clog up our nozzles with um, bits of dirt or, or off cuts of you know, shavings of poly or whatever the case may be. So yeah, leave these little 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 uh, caps in. Then later on, it's easy. You got a little ring pull. Just pull them up, unscrew it, and replace it with the nozzle that you're after. So haven't actually ever fired these up before. So um, we'll do that now. We'll check that everything's flowing clear with water and then we'll start putting the no nozzles in and then we'll move on to our gear drive stuff. I haven't actually got these connected up yet to a timer, but our uh, cable's here to go, our valves are in. Uh, I'll do this last, this will be one of the last things that we do, just in case there's anything here that has to be changed or adjusted or whatever. Um, so you can see here our static pressure, someone must be using water inside. Static pressure is about 700 kPa, which is pretty good actually and a lot of you guys have been commenting on the Instagram post that you're sort of sitting around that 400 well fortunately enough here we're at, we're at sort of 700 further down the road I believe it's a bit higher so all we do now if you want to manually operate one of these valves we can turn them on manually which I think from memory as I said is this first one uh, and that'll start sending water down to the street So we're giving a little bit of a little bit of a flush out. So all we do now is pull him up, which brings up the turret there. Unscrew the installation cap or the flush cap or whatever you want to call it. Now here's our little nozzle, inbuilt filter as well, um, and this one is a right-hand side strip. So it'll go just over a meter uh, wide, and the length will go down about four meters or so. Be in line with that next sprinkler there. It'll probably overshoot it just a little bit, but all we do. Uh, just drop him in. Actually, I think from memory that'll just sit flush like that. That's it, just like that. So that just sits loose in there like that. 
don't let go of this at this point, otherwise it's a pain in the bum to get back out again. And then we just screw on our nozzle. Now there is, there is a, it's not very easy to see, but there is somewhere there, there it is there. You can turn that like that. This will require a fine tune again once they're in, but for now that's fine. So just drop him in and that's installed. So we'll move down to the next one, which is a center, center spray, so it'll reach the full uh, width each side. Righto, so they're all the street sprinklers installed and they're pre-set at the factory to do what they do. So be it a left spray, a right spray, a centre spray, etc. This area here and a bit behind the camera um, is a slightly larger area. And I've gone with another sprinkler nozzle from Hunter and these are uh, a pro spray nozzle. Now, it's little party trick is they're identified by the colours on the top of the cap here, if you will, and this one's a red, which indicates, I think it does about a three metre throw. Now, it will actually adjust from zero degrees all the way around to 360 degrees spray, depending on your situation. And all you do to actually determine that is hold the black bit and the red bit. And if you twist the red bit, you'll start to see it lift up and rise, and that's actually gonna determine how far it covers in spray. So we'll stick these in the ground, and I think these will probably be better in, uh, better adjusted with the system running. So I'll whip these in real quick, and then we'll turn it on and see see how this all uh, how this all goes. Moment of truth. Uh, let's test it out, see what happens. Hopefully it's a good thing, uh, otherwise I might have to make some emergency last minute alterations. So far, so good. So we'll just see how the rest of it's looking. Move on to these ones now. These are the Hunter PGP Ultras, and 
these are really good sprinkler for large areas such as this main lawn here behind me now these are a little bit more fiddly to set up than the other ones now the reason being these are probably a lot more adjustable too in the sense that you can pick different nozzles for different throws okay so you can do that on the other one too i get that but these will cover a lot larger area um, and they're probably a more robust unit now you need a couple of tools for this job and they're all available uh, this is a little stand i guess a little uh, turret holder so all we do use our key so i should show you that one as well this is the adjustment key tool okay so the uh, silver bit here is your uh, nozzle one goes in the nozzle section for screwing down the nozzle holding it in and also fanning out the the uh, spray if it's throwing too far we want to increase the throw uh, two other adjustments here well one other adjustment is the distance or the radius sorry and this one here in the middle which you can't really see but I'll show you goes in here and that will enable you to lift up the sprinkler slot that on now you've got access to this whole sprinkler while it's still under pressure without having to hold on to it so that's a pretty cool thing but first of all, what we'll need to do, same as we did down there, we'll have to flush out this to make sure there's no garbage in the line. Uh, so on these ones, we're just going to unscrew this, unscrew the sprinkler from its body, and we'll turn it on. We'll let a bit of it flush out, and uh, then we'll come back and I'll talk to you about the nozzles. When you buy these sprinklers you'll get a little strip of different size nozzles with them as well so the thing with these sprinklers are or the thing with these sprinklers is they're not actually what they call matched precipitation in other words if you have a cyst, if you have a lawn we'll keep it really simple if you have a a rectangle shaped lawn and let's just say you have uh four sprinklers in the corners and they're both and they're all turning one quarter turns and then you have for example two sprinklers on your rectangle that are doing half circles theoretically you want to find a nozzle and all the specifications are on the website you want to find a nozzle that puts out twice as much uh, water as the ones you've got in the quarter otherwise what's going to happen is you're going to get extra water in the corners and half as much on the halves and if obviously on a full circle um, you're going to be half out again or twice so what I'm going to do here I'm going to do my best to match these nozzles to uh, the areas so quarter ones here I'm going to run with a smaller nozzle than I will with the half and then obviously the full circle there's one sprinkler in this in this design that is in the center which does a full circle it'll have the largest nozzle and then the rest will be worked calculated backwards from that so once again, if you put all the same nozzles in the sprinklers that are all spraying different amounts, then obviously you're going to put in different amounts of water everywhere and it's not going to be very even. So keep that in mind um, and just plan your system on paper first. So you go, right here, I've got four sprinklers that need a nozzle this size and I need one sprinkler that's got a nozzle twice that size or whatever the case may be. But you've got to add up all those flow rates and make sure that you don't exceed your total output of water otherwise it's not going to work either so a little bit of sort of fiddling around there just add up all the numbers until you get to or even start with your maximum flow rate from your tap when you do your timer test and work backwards and see how much you've got and leave yourself a little buffer zone too if you can because in the middle of summer your flow rate might vary because everyone else in the neighborhood is going to be irrigating so I like to work on a little bit of a 10% thing, so it gives me a 10% margin of error, so 10% in my favour, um, and that seems to work pretty well for me. Uh, the, the area down the street there that we just did, I think that's very close to borderline, so um, yeah, I definitely think in summer it'll be it'll be maxed out. So um, these here will be different though, they're broken up into three zones, but anyway, enough waffle on. Let's get some sprinkler nozzles in these sprinklers, and uh, we'll set them up. If you're wondering why this sprinkler is actually above the ground still, obviously when the last of the sand comes in, that's going to be our final height, so or thereabouts. So that's the only reason it's sitting up above the ground so much. Uh, but it does actually make it quite easy to do this sort of work with it too. So um, let's sort of roughly get 
the, the uh, radius sorted. Um, so we start with the sprinkler. You can actually turn these in direction of travel while they're in the ground. Don't sort of force them the wrong way, but you'll work that out. Start off on the right hand side, so as far right as it will go, that'll be your fixed point that doesn't move. Then we put our little key in here and we just turn it to plus or minus. Obviously plus will increase the arc or the radius and the minus will, will be a smaller, more towards a quarter or less than a quarter, etc. So uh, yeah, let's just have a little adjustment there. Uh, that's gonna go there and there. Uh, I've done this a thousand times before, so that's sort of pretty close. Um, we'll just lift him up, we'll stick a nozzle in. I'll bring you around so you can see what's going on. Push him right in with the thumb, then get your little metal key tool in the top. Oop, in the top. And we're just going to screw down, hang on, we'll bring him back around screw down, you can see the grub screw comes down in there uh, and that one's pretty right to go now and we'll just fine tune it when it's uh, when it's running. Let's move on to the next one and we'll try it out. Righto, so same deal again. At the moment, far right's that way, it needs to come around more. So another way you can do this is just unscrew the sprinkler like this, find the right and there's little teeth that match up so you can actually just turn it a little bit and you can cheat to get your right set like that. Then when we go back this way towards my driveway, we can see that's gonna do half because they're preset from factory to do half. So we'll just wind him back, reducing Okay, a little bit more. Always um, reset back to right and then back round. Um, maybe a tiny little bit more. Yep, a bit less. Here we go, I reckon that's about right. Um, until we charge it up with water. So again, into that hole there now. That goes in there like that. And we get our nozzle. Nozzle goes in the front, like so. And in the top here, there's a little secret slot. Get the dust and stuff out. We'll just wind him down a bit. Righto. Let's uh, give that a go and see what it looks like. Not the camera. Oh no! So all the sprinklers are now in and pretty well adjusted. Uh, they might do some fine tuning as the, uh, once the turf goes down, everything sort of finished, finished. But for now, this is pretty good. Um, getting some really good pressure readings too, uh, as in our operational pressure with my pressure gauge. I'll show you that one there now. 
Um, the only one I'm still a little bit hesitant about is actually the ones on the street. Now, even though I did all the calculations, I sort of feel it's getting very close to being uh, not quite enough power in the system or enough flow to run that. So I may end up dividing that into two separate zones. Um, I'll have a little ponder about that. But anyway, guys, look, that's today's episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. Catch you next time on the Aussie Lawn.